In this video, I'll be discussing game theory in the context of cricket. Towards the end of a team's innings, wickets become less important and the main objective of the batsman is to score as many runs as possible, whilst the bowler attempts to minimise the run scored. I will therefore consider run scored as the measure of utility for each player. When the bowler is running into bowl, he has to decide the type of ball he shall bowl. Although there is variation within each category, we can simplify the decision to choose between three different types of delivery. Firstly, the Yorker. This aims to bounce very close to the bat to where the batsman stands. Second is the bouncer. This ball bounces a long way in front of the batsman and bounces to around chest or head height when it gets to the batsman. The final option is the slow ball. This ball uses deception is often difficult to hit as the batsman expects the ball to reach him much faster than it does. Whilst the ball is running into ball, the batsman also has around three choices regarding how to position himself in preparation for the ball. The first option is to remain where he started, the conventional option. Next, he can move down the pitch towards the bowler. Finally, he can move across the pitch to hit the ball behind him. This so-called scoop shot is difficult, but has high rewards. As each player must decide on their course of action before they know the other player's action, we can model this as a simultaneous play game. We can write the payoffs for each action in a matrix and use it to display the payoffs from each combination of actions. When the bowler bowls a Yorker, if the batsman stays still, it's, a, it's hard, he will likely not score. If he comes down and plays a scoop shot, however, the batsman can stop the ball bouncing, making it easier, and score a 6 or 4 respectively. When the bowler bowls a bouncer, staying still can be profitable, leading to a 4. However, coming down the pitch makes it very difficult to score off, hence 0. The scoop is hard to play effectively from a bouncer, so the expected outcome is 2. When the bowler bowls a slow ball, it's difficult to score effectively regardless. However, come down the pitch is slightly easier, hence an expected outcome of 4. The other options have an expected outcome of 2. As the batsman needs to maximise runs scored, we can use runs to indicate utility. The bowler is trying to minimise runs, so we consider the maximum score of 6 as 0 ball utility, and use the formula 6 minus runs to calculate its utility, as is shown in this payoff matrix. We can solve this game in mixed strategy. This means that we calculate the probability with which each player chooses each action, so that the other player is indifferent between their actions. To calculate this, we first look at the expected payoffs for each action the batsman can take. These are displayed in terms of bowler probabilities P and Q. The batsman is indifferent between his actions when the expected payoff from each is the same, so we set them equal to each other and solve the simultaneous equations. This gives the result P equals a quarter and Q equals a half. We now repeat this process for the bowler, giving the result A equals a half and B equals a quarter. For the batsman to be in different between his actions, the ball must bowl a Yorker with probability quarter, bouncer probability a half, and slow ball with probability quarter. The ball must be in, the, for the ball to be in different, the batsman must choose remain still half the time, come down a quarter of the time, and scoop shot a quarter of the time. One famous professional bowler is Chris Jordan. He is renowned for his Yorks and slow balls, however, he bowls bouncers less frequently. On screen is my estimation of the probability of him bowling each. A batsman can use this information to calculate the expected payoff of each action, which I've done for this scenario. The results show that when batting against Chris Jordan, the optimal action is to come down the pitch, as this maximises expected utility. I hope you've enjoyed this application of game theory in the context of cricket. Thank you very much for watching.